Council meeting order. <coughs> the order November first, two thousand sixteen. Alex, you'll give a blessing. See you. All right. Our dear Heavenly Father, O oh Lord, we are thankful. St. John has been, has been a blessed city from its very beginning. In the first days of the settlement here in St. John, it was the afternoon of the second day the sky was filled with darkness and insects settled and filled all of the all of the places where crops had initially been planted in gardens. And they filled it and uh, it it continued through the night and through the next morning. But Early in the morning, the uh, as soon as the sun was up, all of the insects who had settled there rose up and disappeared. Saint John, at, at the end of that time, they, there was nothing that was eaten or disturbed. That all left. Great Ben, the editor in Great Ben, got in touch with William Hickerson, who was in charge of this colony in 1871. And he, uh, after they disappeared, he got in touch with William Hickerson and asked if uh, there were still any insects that might be seen. He answered, there might be one or two. He said that they're bachelors. <laughs> but he, anyway, there have been many things that have happened, even within my lifetime, to St. John. There's been floods, long years of, of famine, or gross, or Famine, even worse in some places, during the 30s and the early 40s. It, there have been floods, so that it was difficult to get to Great Bend without going by big way of a boat. And many other things that have happened that St. John in the end has, has been a blessed place, therefore. We we know of the many times in which tornadoes have passed through us with no disturbance to our city, and the times in which other difficulties, even severe hail, has wrecked our homes. But all has been recuperated, restored, and many who have lived here for a long time uh, were happy to live here and still are. And we, at this time, ask the Lord to bless our necessities, to renew us as a city, to bless those who are considering at this time uh, the renewal of a store in which we are able to buy our daily necessities and the necessities of those who are at this time are suffering. And this we ask in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and we praise Him for all He has previously done. This we ask in His holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alex.
a few people here. Anybody got any citizen comments? Brings us to uh, appointing a new council person to take Troy Hansen's place. And with you guys' thoughts process and approval, I would like to appoint uh, Ryan Christie to our council. Um, I won't do that if you got something that uh, you think we should do. Okay. Um, one of the things that uh, I spoke with. Uh, Mr. Tucker and Mr. Clausen after council last week. Mr. Clausen um, declined to uh, be uh, put up for um, city council. Mr. Tucker did. Um, when we had our last election, Mr. Tucker had uh, ran and he'd gotten quite a few votes from the public. I think it's only fair that we consider him and appoint him to council. No offense, Mr. Christie. I know your family and I respect you. However, I think that it is only fair that we go by what the people of this community have done. And they have voted for him, even though he did not win the last election. That is something that we need to consider. Now, I, it is up to this council what they want to do, but we need to consider what the people of this community have wanted. I don't know what the rest of you think. Nobody has any comments. Nothing. I would just say we move forward with the mayor's appointment. I don't know. I mean, not other than. I mean, we had to fill Bob's position, and nothing has ever brought up with him not to get on at that time either. So I don't. I just didn't know if maybe he didn't have any interest anymore. Said, I don't know. Nobody else has anything else to say. Is there anything about it? Is that what we want to do next? I think we need to do something about it. However, I've set my piece on this. That's the mayor's decision, and I mean, I've, it's his choice, and we need to. I mean, I don't have a problem with building my own home. I have no problem. I have no personal problem with you whatsoever. I want you to understand that. However, I am looking for what is what the people have, have done in the past, what this community did. When they voted, they voted. Mr. Tucker got 113 votes. That's 113 people that thought that he would do a good job for this community. I think we need to respect that. Is there anything wrote in the bylaws that that is what we have to do? No, you, you appoint and then council either has to not accept your appointment and then you have to reappoint someone else or council has to approve and make a motion to approve your appointment. But ultimately it comes down to you and you get to appoint. It's mm -hmm. called the five consent right. whatever that means. So you, you tell them that this is who you want and they can either say yes or no and then to go back and say, okay, this is what I want, and I say, yes or no. How so that ultimately comes down to you. So you've made an appointment, so now I think either they have to deny the appointment or they have to make a motion to approve the appointment. What's Troy's term? 19. I'm sorry. 2019. Sorry. What's my term? 2019. No, actually, no, as of right now, it's next year. I think yours is 2017. Yes. Well, I've made an appointment for a council member. I guess I will entertain a motion. So move. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor? All opposed? Passes three and one. Brian, you're our new council member. I'll let Madonna swear you in. Raise your left hand and you just have to repeat. 
can you say I, Ryan Christie, do you solemnly swear? I, Ryan Christie, do you solemnly swear? Sincerely and truly declare and affirm. Sincerely and declare. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I'll support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Kansas. And the Constitution of the State of Kansas. And faithfully discharge the duties of City Council member. And faithfully discharge the duties, the duties of, of the City Council member. So help me God. So help me God. It's a sign right there, right underneath that. I guess I got ahead of myself. Are there any additions to the agenda? <clears throat> just the attorney wants just a five day executive session. Department head committee reports. Or no, let's see. We got approved the minutes and approved an ordinance 1101 2016 for $26,237.97. $26, so moved. Second. We got a motion and a second. All in favor? All opposed? Passes 5 1. Okay, department heads committee reports. Grocery store task force report. Nobody's here to do that. Grant administrator. Lisa's not here. I spoke with her earlier today. Um, nothing has come down. Really? Yeah. So it's just been real slow according to her. I was going to say most of the stuff comes out first. Yeah, that's what she said. Yeah, so. It really should be nice if we get ten million dollars. It would be. Nice. <laughs> Fire report, Mark, Mark, Marshall, is he, Mike's is not here, so moving on. City clerk, but Adam. 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 Oh, Adam, police. Oh, Adam. They ain't got nothing either. Okay. City clerk. Okay. So in your We're going to be out of here by 7 30. Is that the goal? Okay, so um, in your guys' packet, we met with the Blue Cross Blue Shield insurance provider this week, and you guys will see for the current insurance that you guys offer the city employees, it's going to go up 8.15%. Now I know I I thought that was high too last year. It was 11%, but really after talking to cities yeah. and NIDA and some others, that's that's actually really low. Mine went up 51%, so that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'll, I'll take I'll take eight percent. So we just need to decide, I guess I just need you guys to decide if you want to keep the city plan the way it is and, and keep the 95% to 5%, if you guys want to switch that up, if you want to look at the other plan, the other plan in my eyes is not as good as this one, but it is going to save the city um, some money. So is there I just money think, in the budget to keep the yep. plan the way it is? Yep. I make a motion to leave the plan the same. Second. Okay. Got a motion on the table and a second. Uh, any more discussion? What is this other plan with? Who's it's it? with Blue Cross and Blue Shield. It's just a different, cheaper plan which puts more of the burden of cost onto the employee instead of the, the insurance in the city. Pretty much. The, the other thing in there too was um, Right now, you guys do not offer dental care for the city employees. We have asked, um, some have asked me to bring that up to see if you guys would like to start offering the dental well, care. Yeah, I think we did, didn't we? Or did we, we didn't end up getting it. We did they, not. Don't, okay. they do not have dental because I asked. We do. It is offered through AFLAC. AFLAC, so, so yeah. Minimally. Yeah, but then you have to pay everything out and then AFLAC right. reimburses you. But it's, it's, not, it's not a part of the... 
Yeah, it's not part of the so insurance. Part of the yes. Okay. Yeah. This would be part of their whole insurance, so which would cover. The whole no, this would be in addition to the to the policy. It would just mean that the city would pay a little bit more to provide the dental. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So you the dental care right now. This is what it would it would be because it would all divide up between if divided up if just the employee or if it's the employee and child or if it's the employee spouse or if it's the family. So what you guys are going to look at if everyone that's enrolled in the insurance now would be enrolled in the daycare and the dental care. You're looking at an addition of $9,312.29 that the city would pay for that dental care. Which the dental care would give them, I mean, it gives you, you get 100% on the primary payment, there's 50% on oral and surgical, and that they would pay 50% on like bridge. Um, and a hundred percent payment on like surgery bones and stuff like that. I mean, it's not that bad of an insurance plan. It would give them something else besides the whole AFLAC reimbursement. So I just need to know if that's something you guys want to do, or if you guys just want to stick to what that's you have. That's on top of what? That would be on top. So your grand, like the current plan plus the dental, would equal out to one hundred and forty-three thousand nine hundred and twenty-five dollars a year next year. That's what the city would pay. And this is what our current plan is. Yeah, the current plan would That's what it will be next year. Yeah, that should be what it would be next year. Submit the claim to AFLAC, AFLAC reimburses them. That is 95% of the family. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so the city, yes, so the city pays 95% of all the insurance. And then the city pays yeah. the 5%. So I, you know, I, I, it should say, you know, we can skip the cost of living raise. Yeah, several times. This is, this is way more than possible. Can we add this on the first of the year if we choose to? No, I would have to decide. You guys you guys don't have to decide today. I mean, that's why I'm telling you guys now. We do have the next meeting that you guys can because by the you want to decide by the 1st of December. So then that way they can print the cards because it does take a while to get the cards printed for everybody. That's what he said. So that's why I was presenting it to you today. As of right now, I'll stick with my original. Got a motion and a second on the table. Because we could add that at the next meeting. You sure can. We can still talk about it. And I can check to see if you guys wanted to do a different percentage on the day, the Delta Care, and see if okay the city you know pays ninety percent versus the ninety five percent. I don't I don't know if they can split it up, but I even if we were to do the ninety percent, that's still pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I can okay. be more than happy to do that. If you went down to 85, 80 percent, that's still pretty good. Yeah. So I can ask. Please, yeah, please yeah, look. I'm looking at all that all stuff. Right. Okay. The last thing is, um, right now, you guys pay for life insurance, accidental life insurance. You pay for them to have a ten thousand dollar policy. Um, with the current rates of funeral costs, that that doesn't cover very much. That's what um, I'm led to believe. So. He has offered three plans to see if you guys would like to increase that. You pay everything. The, the city employee does not pay for any of that premium. So the one, of course, he recommends is the 20000 one, which works out to $998.40 per year. That's that per person? No. That covers, the, that would cover them. 
And that would give them an that would give the person an additional ten thousand dollars in accidental life insurance. But that's all in his motion. No. 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 This My is, motion is to leave his motion is to leave it the same. Insurance yeah. the same. Yeah. So that's what I thought. Okay. I was just throwing that other one out there to see if you guys wanted to include it or if you wanted to do a different motion to increase that or if you guys want to wait and do those together at the next meeting. Discuss them at the next meeting. Yeah, let's discuss it at the next meeting. Okay. Perfect. So now we need to vote. You can go. So we're going to. We're going to open, we're going to put the dental in the... No. 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 We'll no, 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 we'll discuss it next week. We've got a motion and a second to leave the insurance. Go ahead. All in favor? All opposed? Pass five and leave it. Perfect. Okay. Anything Just else, LaDonna? Um, just that we have another zoning meeting tomorrow. If you guys would like to come, it's at 6 o'clock. What is that for? For Jackie Johnson's backyard. Jackie. Jackie Couch. <coughs> oh, you would know where it's Jackie Couch. All right. But you guys are all welcome to come. It's at 6 o'clock. Uh, Jeff's not here. Yep. Uh, he wanted, anybody, I know what he wants. Does anybody know what he's talking about? Purchase an old bitch witch locator? I yep, know that's from, no, he wants to sell it. Jerry Munden has offered to purchase the old Ditch Witch locator for $150. So he wanted to know if that would be okay for him to sell it to Jerry Munden for $150. So don't shoot the messenger. I don't, I don't know just, if we can do that. The new one was 30, 3800 or $4,000. Don't we have to open that? Don't we have to sell that? Yeah, that's what I, I thought we had to do. Yeah. Silk, silk yeah. Yeah. They should have allowed a trade in value back then instead of doing it this way. <coughs> I would just do this. Uh, just do the sealed bid. Yeah. I'll just do a sealed bid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know what um, bid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just reading it. What he says. I'm just reading what he says. Um, the other thing with the roof. Uh, the roofing. People that you were using last year to fix the roofs um, has gone out of business. We can't get a hold of them. They're selling real estate, according to Jeff. That's what they're doing. So he wants to know if it would be our, he's, he's looking at other ones. Um, you guys need to be prepared that we are almost over our 180 days of that claim. So the insurance company is looking into to see if we will get the majority of it back or to see if there's going to be a... You, know, you might not get all of it, what you guys initially claimed for. All right, so I'm just letting you guys know that. hired somebody to do a job? We never well, we hired never hired we them. We got bids. They we got, got bids. Them. And then when, then when Corey came, we tried to get it up and rolling again. And then they, the insurance said that they had to strip down the flat roofs and replace mm -hmm. everything. Well, this land, this roofer just wanted to seal it. And, of course, the insurance said if you just seal it, then if something happens to it, we will not pay for anything because we are telling you you need to get rid of all of it. So they wanted to see the claim. So we sent them the, the insurance claim, and then after that, we never heard from them. So Jeff tried to call, and through his calling, he has found out that this company has, is no longer in business. So it looks like we're going to have to look for a new roofing company. And he wanted to know, do you want him to take that on now with it getting so close to the cold weather? Well, I think so, because one of the roofs was the skating rink that leaked water horrible last Correct. Year. And that's one of the ones that they said that you have to take everything completely off and redo it all. You can't just lay a seal over it. So or you could, but then they wouldn't cover it. Yeah, I'll get it. Find okay. someone right now. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. <coughs> it's that one, it's this one. Fire station. Fire station was okay. But I think the two main ones is this one and that one, and it might be the the power plant. I think it was all, all of them but the fire <coughs> station that I'm not positive. And this all happened when like Mel was the city superintendent. That's how long that's been. Yeah. No, that's it. That's all you have. 
You can tell Jeff thanks for getting this whole concrete shut. Looks good. That's nice. yeah. Yeah, and they're working over here on the gutter, I think, over here. Yeah. yeah. I also know that all this stuff on purple is sold today. It, it sold there. We received five invoices for payment. Some of the vehicle ones I haven't received yet to show how much we bought or what they got paid for. But we have re received five. Um, uh, the old bus, there's an error in the VIN number on the title compared to what's on the actual bus. So um, that title's coming back. We will have to fix that and get that fixed and then send it to the right owner. And that's Okay, uh, brings us to city attorney, and I need to somebody to make a motion for a five-minute executive session. Attorney Klein, privilege. So moved. To include. Council on the third. Mayor. And mayor. Second. Governing body. Governing body. We've got a motion and a, and a second. All in favor? All opposed? Passes five. And we resume at uh, seven thirty-one. Thirty-two. Council meeting back to order. Marshal. I would direct the city attorney to go ahead and pursue the issue with the residents on the four hundred block of East First. Four hundred six. Four hundred six East First. Second. And you don't have to say it. Just direct the direction. Okay. Direction. Yeah. Direction. Yeah. Direction. Yeah. Direction. Yeah. direction. Okay, anything else, John? Uh, I think I've got some stuff under old business. Okay, we'll move on to old business. Axman's land donation and sidewalk project. Anybody get anything to put on that? Uh, the surveyor has been by, if you guys drive by there, the survey stakes are all out. So um, that's pretty much all I know that the survey's been done on it. So if you guys want to. Well, that's for that's for Kansas. The when Kansas, when the surveyor went to go do it, he found out that the state did not file uh, the proper right away legal description up at the register of deeds. So now he has typed it up. It's all going to be done, and he's going to get it to us. So once he gets it to us, then I'll go over and I'll file it, so that way we know it's done, and then John can take it. I think we still need to do a sidewalk. That's the annexation. That's the annexation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, so I just that's on the annexation. But the survey land, everything's been surveyed. Everything's been surveyed. Everything's staked. Okay, so now so we're just ready for the next step. So I need to do a sidewalk ordinance too, and then once we get the legal on the annex, are you guys wanting to do a special session, special meeting? The sidewalk is is not under the annexation. No, but, no, but I mean, I'm just you're, sure. you're trying to do it together. Okay. Yeah. It's been as soon as possible, so yes. Okay. And I'll I'll tell you, the Department of Revenue when that that sales tax kicks in and send everybody a letter saying your sales tax will increase. But there's like a I don't want to say 40 days, but off the top of my I don't know where they don't penalize somebody. Don't collect the sales tax. So, and I probably shouldn't be saying this out loud, but some real big retailers that collect sales tax will not collect sales tax or have a So, I, I don't go into it the first check. Okay. But sure, there. So, then once you get it, then I can get a hold of everyone to see when the guys want to have that special. Is that pretty much what I'm hearing? Yeah, you can get back to the one. You can get to the one. You can get Jeff to the one. He said he was going to get typed up. Well, it's already interesting to be plugged in. The sidewalk ordinance is on the actual slam donation. All right. All right. Going down behind the dog here. Right. Yeah, if you guys drive down First Street, you'll see it where they staked it out. Where what did we decide on the fence? Well, as of right now, all we decided to do was this 
there have been enough accidents and the short stops. So that's how we're having it here all at one time. Correct. Correct. We are decided on one. That was yes. one that was yeah. last week. Which is, so, so just, that's how we had the guy come in to do the survey for John so that he could do the annexation. Correct. Do we need a wait then on the sidewalk ordinance? Just I mean, you can, you can <laughs> give it to us so we can see it, a draft of it or something. I don't think we actually chose to go forward with that yet. Any questions for John on the annexation of the sidewalk property? Okay, next thing I know is pay plan. Um, you guys wanted it tabled so you guys could see the descriptions. We got the descriptions done. Um, and so you guys should all have it in your packet. Let me see so I want to say. No, I remember it. Okay. I went through all of it. So I just need you guys to, is there anything you guys want corrected in it? Is it, if it's make, if it's happy to you guys, there's no corrections. Then the next step is to pass an ordinance adopting the new pay plan. So do you have that ordinance? I do. I have it right here, all ready to go. The new pay plan, but there's no changes? No more changes. Well, it's the I mean, job it's the job descriptions. You know, we had agreed the on change. the pay scale, on how the pay scale and stuff was, that right. we were, You guys wanted the, to see old, the, the last one didn't have the job descriptions changed. Okay. And so this one has the job descriptions in it. Right. And I, I'm fine with that. Yeah, after looking it over, yeah, I'll make a table. So then I just, I need someone to make a motion to adopt the ordinance. And then, um, it's 1042. I'll make a motion to adopt ordinance number 1042. Second. Do I have a copy of that? You do. It's right there. You're looking right at it. Or the ordinance now because I just saved it. I just, that's my it's my sole copy, so you have to sign it. It also says in that ordinance John has put in there. So if you guys ever decide that you want to make another change, you don't have to do an ordinance. You can just do a resolution. So to the pay plan. To the pay if plan. You start changing duties. You have to change. I mean, if you, you do it. Correct. But if you just do the pay plan, all you can do is a resolution. You don't do another. Everybody seen this? Oh, I haven't seen the seen yours, but we looked at the paperwork. Yeah. Well, I looked at the paperwork. I looked at all the changes. Yeah, so did I. Uh, yeah, I plan to uh, We got a motion on the table. And a second. A second. A second. Any more discussion? I didn't give it. My evaluation's already been done. Okay. Now, you do, since you brought that up, there are some employees that have not got their evaluations completed. So I'm going to. It's all right with you guys. I was going to initiate this pay plan on those evaluations. So then that way they don't get the worst of the two races. So well, it's, about, it's about five times. Yeah. Brings us to sewer line on Highway 281. I put this on the agenda. We had some things going on. I thought we needed to talk about this. What's going on? What you got is thoughts on the sewer line. As far as well, we don't have one. We don't have one. Or don't we have one? Uh, we don't, the only place we do have would be between on Fifth Street. Well, yeah. Between Lawrence right. and Mobile. It crosses highway to me too. But there's nothing going south of the city. Mobile. There's a lift station in place. The yeah. LED that can go both ways. I, I talked to Jeff, this is only my opinion, and I think it needs to be at the back of the properties instead of up there with the phone and the gas and the water. That's what we're here to talk about. Where we, where we 
anything from anywhere to do anything. But you're going to have to take a right away right through the middle of the building. <laughs> well, you go past that. You go 300 feet off 281, but you pass the last building. And then go north to north. North to north. you behind the old building, Charles? Yeah. 300 feet low? Yeah. And, and it would still go into the bus station. But you're still going to have to have a right away. Right, yeah. I mean, you're going to have to have a right away from every landowner out there. Yeah. Do they want that? I don't know. There's basically only one landowner going north. Yeah. And there's Bob Ice has got it. Uh, Randy Fisher Shop doesn't have it. Bob Chief doesn't have it. So it's a whole list going that way. The Dollar General got it. The Zomatic is not. Going south is probably a better option. The lift station's there. Anytime you want to add on to it, right. that was Jim. Yeah, that's what I mean. But there's, you, you guys know as well as I know, there's some things that's been brought up, and if you don't have that type of thing in there, there's no way you're going to do what we were talking about. I was just trying to get a little jump on the game here. Yeah, there's a business going in. Need to assure them that there's going to be city sewer. Well, I don't have a problem putting sewer to places that I mean, if a business wants to come in out there, right? I would. Yep. And I think that's. I think it's something that we need to be proactive on the certain looking at it. And I thought at one and time, that, one time that we, had, when Corey was here, he was going through all that stuff about new services. Right. Was there one time with on it? Water service, sewer service. Yeah. Well, you guys. For a new service, they have to pay everything to tap onto your guys' lawn. That's on the homeowners. But it was talking about as far as supplying them. We'd have to look at that again. We're going to have to adopt yeah. some kind of ordinance, some kind of change. That was the water yeah. line. That was the, I think, the water But I think it covered sewer. I think it covered all utilities. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought it did. I know, I know what. Ohio Township's building down there. Correct. They wanted water. Mm -hmm. Well, I remember that the water, they were going to have to run it clear down the alley to get them water because they didn't own the co op on the property to the south. So it wasn't like they could just run it right to the building. So they were going to have to, and that was the whole thing how much does the city pay for to supply them with water? Once you pull that information up, and oh. we'll table that till next meeting, and we'll look at that at that time. It was just on the water. I think it was just water. It was Ordinance 10, 1006. <coughs> that it, it's just on water. That. Mm, I think that's, that's it. That's not it. Oh. That's not it. Oh. I'll find it. I just put it on for old business and see if you can find it for us. So leave it on there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now that completes old business. Under new business, we have stray cats. Um, I've gotten a few complaints from uh, some people regarding uh, stray cats. Most recently, uh, um, Bill Thornbrew over at uh, um, St. John Lumber had uh, talked to me about some stray cats coming in and um, uh, turning some um, concrete into uh, bricks. <laughs> so, um, he's, uh, he was pretty upset about it um, and uh, he was asking what we um, were planning on doing on any of this and I had a chance to um, talk with uh, Chief Saylor. Um, Chief Saylor, again, can you enlighten us a little bit more on what you and I had talked about? Uh, yeah, I mean, we do this. We've picked some up from him in the past. I mean, we have animal traps that we put out. Um, and our, our, our animal ordinance um, allows for the disposal of, of nuisance animals, stray animals, and that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, but I mean, it's, essentially that's, it kind of comes up to the, to the uh, part of the responsibility of the landowner, I mean, or, or the property owner. We don't know um, that that kind of stuff's going on unless we're made aware of it. So, um, something we do try to do is, is if, if a property owner has their own trap and they have the means, we ask them to take care of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if they catch a, 
whatever, a possum, something like that. But, but we play it by ear because we understand there are some people that don't have, they might not have a truck, they might not have the means to, or the place to dispose of it. So we just, you know, it's a service we provide um, if it's necessary. I mean, it's... So the lumber yard, if they needed to, they, they could contact the police department and you could place some traps around there if, well, if I requested? Can, all of our traps are being used right now, okay. so I can't say I can okay. place one tomorrow. Um, but, I mean, if, if, if it's a big enough issue, we can order more traps, too. I mean, that's, you know, but again, it's, it is one of those things that we have to tread lightly and be careful on how right. that is handled. Okay. Um, I'll talk with uh, Mr. Sorenberg. And you guys should have a copy of the ordinance, or I mean, the code, <coughs> the city code on there. Yeah, my consensus would be buy more traps as soon as possible. <coughs> Because they the get, traps. well, they no, get, too. according to the city code, they get fined just like if a dog gets impounded. If, like, let's say you pick up a, a cat that's registered. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're supposed well, to register. That's one of the things we try to tell a property owner. Obviously, you catch a cat that has a collar on or something in a trap, we just ask them to let it go. Um, unfortunately, it was, it's one of those ordinances that's really hard to enforce. <laughs> because I have yet to see somebody successful at keeping a cat on a leash. Uh, you know, but I mean, it, it is enforceable if it's a problem. Um, but I, I would venture to say 90 to 95% of the cats that we catch in traps are feral cats. And you can tell when you go up there that most of them have disease and they, they have discharge from their nose and mouth and ears and stuff like that, and they're a legitimate nuisance. But we do the same thing. If we get called to a, a residence or business that has a cat that either appears to be tame when you pick up the trap and it doesn't go crazy or it's, it's got a car, then we let them go so they can go back home. Well, it seems that we've got quite a few uh, um, cats living in the sewers. Um, I know one thing One thing that was uh, did, was said to me was that if we, we don't start looking at this problem a little bit more seriously right now, that it's probably going to take someone to get hurt, catch rabies, if, if that comes to it, you know. You know that's not well, going to be good for the city. Cat traps for one yeah, day, so. yeah. So just throwing that out there. If you need live traps, Adam, you can come borrow some of mine. Mine are all marked with my name, but I've probably got ten or so. I think I'd honestly rather order. I mean, because we had issues in the past where if we don't keep a strong handle on it, they let their neighbor borrow it. The neighbor borrows it before we know if we don't have no regard that way. Less liability if the trap's got his name. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you talk about the liability, that's one of the reasons that we try to handle them as little as we can, too. Um, because it's all it takes is one scratch, one bite. We've all been through it, we've all been through the shots, and we just don't care to experience that. Thank you. Sir. That's all that's on the agenda. Anything you guys got to add or add or talk about? Nope. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Got a motion and a second. All in favor? By the note.